Hey everybody, my name is Aaron Blaze and I've been a professional artist for over 30 years. 21 of those years were spent at Walt Disney Feature Animation where I was an animator and a director. Now I'm also a painter and a concept artist and what I'd like to do today is take you guys through my process in creating an image using your Wacom Intuos tablet and Corel Painter Essentials. So why don't we go ahead and get started. So I love to paint animals. I love making fantasy animals. Let's try mixing two animals together. Let's try a lion and a zebra. I just, you know, they're predator, <laughs> one's predator, one's prey, it might be kind of fun. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go up to under, just under file, and we're going to open a new document. I like to keep everything around 300 DPI and my, my dimensions, let's just do uh, 12 by 8 inches. I like to go by inches and we'll call it zebra slash lion for nothing better. <laughs> All right, so now we've got our document. The next thing I like to do is I just want to open up that workspace. So I'm just going to pull this corner down. That way my document can float around inside and I can go ahead and paint. Now, I love to work in layers. Um, one thing I'm going to do here is right on that little icon, I'm going to click it and you can see I've opened up a new layer on top. And then what I want to do is I want to come up and pick a brush. And there's a whole bunch of brushes there. You can see right now it's set on blenders, but I'm grabbing chalk and pastel and I'm going to grab a charcoal pencil. Now, one of the first things to remember when getting started with your tablet is there, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve where you're looking at the screen and your hand is down here. So what I really recommend is getting your tablet aligned exactly like your screen. If it's tilted like this and you're trying to draw, it doesn't, your, your cursor will go in weird directions on the screen. I learned that the hard way when I first started. So when you can get your, your tablet lined up like so, just like your screen, then your, your eye is going to be wanting the cursor to go a certain direction and your hand will follow. Okay? Now the other thing too is as we start drawing, as we start drawing, you know, be loose. When we're doing that, 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 uh, when we're doing that rough drawing, don't get, don't get really noodly with it, okay? You want, to get, you want to be loose and you want to be free. This, it's this stage where we're going to be, we want to find our composition and we, we want to find the drawing. So don't, you know, don't get tight. Just stay really nice and loose and just try to sweep through the image. Yeah, keep your, keep your brush strokes, you know, long. Like I said, don't get noodly. This is your chance to really just kind of get in there and, and kind of find, find your composition. You know, I'm, I'm paying attention to this reference photograph that I'm using of that lion. And um, I, I want to get depth. I want to get form. I'm looking for muscle masses. I'm really just, I'm just trying to, like I said, rough in that image and get it to feel right. And I'm also going to be able to resize it. I can get it to sit inside the composition the way I want it. So now we're getting a little bit further down the road. I've gotten a little bit of the details. You can see I've gotten a few of the muscle masses laid in there. And you know, I'm going to start laying in a little bit of detail. I'm, I'm, I want to draw this snout here a little bit and work out that nose. But I'm going over here and what I want to do here is I, I'm you notice how the, the animal is at a rear three quarter to us. And one of, the, one of the reasons I wanted to do that was I wanted to show the form. I wanted to show the roundness of, the, of this cat zebra. And, um, you know, if I'd shown it in just profile, it would feel flat. But if I, by turning it in three quarter like this, I can really emphasize the form, the roundness. And actually, when we start adding stripes, we're really going to be able to emphasize that roundness. And so you can see as I draw, I'm really trying to push that. Now I want to I want to work some of these details into the snout, into the face. I've got the face done, but one of the things that bothers me about the head right now is that it feels a little bit big. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to go over to my tool over here, and I'm going to grab my lasso tool, and I'm just going to circle the face because it feels a little bit big for me. Then I can come back over and click on my uh, lasso tool again and go over and this is my transform tool. And here if I hold the shift key and then push in you can see that I can keep the same uh, proportion but shrink it. And now I just come up here and click on my on select and come down and click on none and that gets rid of the selection.
So now I want to get into doing those stripes on the on the head. And here I'm looking at my reference and this, you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate of looking, you know, use reference, always use as much reference as you can. And so rather than making it up, um, obviously I'm making up an animal, but I can get in here and I can start, you know, I can start with a real zebra and I can start painting these stripes in on how they might look on a, on a lion instead. Now keep in mind, I'm always, always staying loose at this stage. Once again, I'm really just exploring. We've got a whole other stage that we're gonna do next where we refine everything. But it's at this point that I wanna keep everything loose and really just kind of explore. This is your chance to really have fun because everything after this is gonna be tying down the imagery and getting ready for the painting. So this is where you really, for me, this is almost the funnest part of the painting because um, anything's possible and I can explore. So now I've got a little bit more of the stripes done. You can see the heads in there. Now I want to start working on this body and look at, see what I was talking about earlier, how those stripes really define the roundness of that zebra when I'm looking at that reference. And so I'm just going to start drawing nice and round around the form and just once again, keeping nice long brush strokes and, and just keeping everything very loose and following the form of that neck. So now I've got, I've got you know, the neck done, I'm getting into the body. This is where we're gonna get into some really um, fun stuff where we're def defining the form, getting into those muscles. See how I've got a little break right there as the stripe wraps around right here into that latissimus muscle and down into the, into the ribs and all that down underneath. And I, you can see how those, how those stripes really define the form. It, it gives it almost a 3D effect. So we basically have all of the uh, our Zion uh, or uh, Libra <laughs> roughed in. Um, once again, just keeping it loose. I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to see where he's going to sit in the composition. I'm going to finish up a few details here on the main, but um, uh, right now it, it's, uh, you know, I've got a nice sense of what this character is going to look like, but we still want to put a background in there. So I'm just going to finish up a couple of details on him. And uh, I wanted to find some of these stripes over the brow and, and uh, get that right. But, you know, one of the beauties of, of working um, digitally like this is this ability to really just get in there and, and just start thrashing about on your composition. You can't really do that with traditional media. You got to, even if you're going loose, you got to be a little bit... Um, planned out. And one of the things I love to do is really sometimes not even plan it. I just like to get in there and just start drawing and see what evolves. And that's kind of what we're doing today. You know, I, we, we knew that we wanted to do this creature, but I'm just kind of finding it as we go. Um, you know, that's what these tools enable us to do. It's fantastic because, you know, working in layers like this, um, I'm able to pull back on the opacity like later on we're gonna we're gonna dim the opacity on this layer and we're gonna draw right over the top of that we can just build up layer after layer um, so right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add some clouds back there I want a nice big open sky something nice nice and big and, and clear for our nice detail-y looking zebra lion to kind of sit against so that feels good now that we've got the rough drawing in and we've basically got our composition, let's go ahead and move on to the next video.